All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I trust you're as excited as I am. Dr. Ayobami Uyedari is already around. Welcome, sir. Yeah, you should be on mute soon. Yes, OK. I think you're on mute now. Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Yeah, so great to have you around, sir. Um, yeah. So good to, <laughs> to see you. Thank you, my brother. Excellent and awesome. Yeah. Yes, how are you feeling today, sir? Uh, very much, quite perfectly okay. I've had a lot of work, you know, just let one teaching out to quickly rushing. <laughs> wow, you know? amazing. So let us jump right into it because um, I know that you are strained for time. So welcome everyone again to the forum on the venture. And this is our first session for series five. You know, we're starting the conversation on a very high note where we're discussing the creation of ecosystems that are driven by the undergraduate community for the local economy of their um, tertiary institutions. And I have with me Dr. Ayobami Uedari, who is an acad academician, but also very invested in um, corporate, corporate governance and the development of value and value creation, right? Especially in African and Pan-African um, um, ideology. So it's so great to have him start off this conversation. So we'll be having this conversation in a batch of four, just like we normally do, where we start off with a trivia, trying to, to establish why we have such a personality in our midst, um, what is his interest in the conversation. And then we would have um, the discourse where we try to understand the fundamental basics behind the conversation we're having. Then we have a strategy session where we can draw from his wisdom and insight into the conversation and then we'll end it with the last session which is the forum where we get to discuss the one thing that we can take an action on right now so so great to have you here sir and the first question we want to ask is you know i know you are very invested in young people um both locally and internationally right so we'd like to know what are the untapped potentials and the unexplored opportunities between the undergraduate community and its host community that would you know, if we can tap that, we'll be able to create a vibrant value creation ecosystem. And so I can also give us a little brief about, you know, who you are and your interests, just so that everybody is, 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 on, is on board. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, my brother. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone, you know, from the United Kingdom. And um, I, let me say my unreserved gratitude, you know, to you all for joining uh, this special conversation. It's quite very pertinent and I'm very particular about this particular topic. And I'm, I'm also, I must place on record, you know, the outstanding effort of the team, you know, with a special mention of the coordinator, Mr. Toyin, you know, for the, for, for the creation of this audacious forum, and uh, which is basically redefining and championing what I would call the unprecedented new approach that is capable of driving more sustainable socioeconomic space in our educational culture and its ecosystem. This is quite very important. And I think we must applaud you, you know, for building this vision, and I'm, I must mention that I'm very well connected to this. It's something that's dear to my heart. And I work for His Imperial Majesty, the Union of Fife. And this is also very dear to the heart of His Imperial Majesty. The young people are the driver of the new Nigeria, the new Africa. And we must create such an approach of giving them the right space, right, right vision, which they actually have to redefine the space we are they belong into. And that's what the old you know, driver is all about. And also, let me mention, you know, that in response to the, 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 the new normal of living with COVID-19 pandemic, and it's an unprecedented uh, invasion of our education and economy in human history, you agree with me that we are currently having a very you know, depth of challenges in Nigeria today. We have millions of young people that are just staying at home, having no idea of when they're going to get back to school or what they're going to be doing. Uh, the system is basically just, you know, not fit for purpose in terms of what should happen. I mean, in the global society where this pandemic has actually occurred, you find other institutions finding a new approach, a new system of engaging the community, the institutional community, the undergraduate, you know, the postgraduate, the, the school turnaround. That's a shift in the whole approach of educational system. And unfortunately, that shift has not been part of what we have. You know, right now, and this is exactly when you're talking about the untapped potentials, you know, and unexplored opportunities. We have so many young people across all our educational society in Nigeria. Undergraduate communities, 176 million, 176, sorry, please, 176 universities. 
all across Nigeria. That is not little, that is not small. That is a massive number. And the, the challenge is the fact that we are not, we're not exploring what these young people actually do have in terms of their strength, in terms of their vision, in terms of their invention, in terms of things they can actually do you know, within the university community. I've had to interact with so many young people in different universities in Nigeria, and you see some amazing mind-blowing ideas that is coming out of them. Now the question is, how do we integrate that into the university community? How do we integrate that into the community where they even belong? And I remember first and foremost, when I got to, when I was doing my undergraduate in Nigeria, and I had to just normal processes, just like what we have today, it has not changed. And this is why it's funny. It actually gives me a whole lot of headache. A system cannot remain static. System has to change. System has to evolve. They have to be embraced. They have to actually get to understand the new ideology, you know, buying into global practices, you know, buying into new culture, buying into new ideology, buying into new materials that you find happening. But unfortunately, that is not what we have right now in Nigeria today. Now, you know, tapping into the potentials of our young people, it's quite very important. But unfortunately, because they do not have the voice of their own, and I'm very thankful to you, Tony. This is the voice you're creating. You're creating a system that we outlive you. You're creating a system that we turn the wealth of Nigeria around, that we turn the wealth of Africa around by creating an opportunity for the young people to begin to rethink. We need to have a new paradigm shift, even of our young students. I've been at the OAU at different times, and the question I ask myself is, when I see students passing by, I ask myself, now, what was he thinking about? What is he thinking about in his mind? Now you have over 40, 40, 43 to 45,000 students at Dubai Memorial University. Now you can imagine across 175 universities in Nigeria, beyond. I mean, 175 after 2018 was 175. And I believe perhaps we have new, other new, uh, what do you call the private universities right now evolving and they've been approved by the federal government of Nigeria. The question is, how can we bring together exploring the depth of knowledge that actually residing in the heart and mind of our young people, bringing those out and giving them the opportunity. Now, let me, let me mention this to you, Tony. You know, we have to find a human process to make yes, this happen. Yes, sir. A policy process to mm. make this happen. I've seen a young chaps at the OAU, about four or five of them, I think you and I had this conversation a couple of days ago, who write from IFE and they are just secure about $25,000, you know, from a venture capital in the US and I asked them, how did you do that? If it's, this is not Lagos, I mean Ife. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about Abuja. I'm not talking about the city. I'm yes, talking sir. about Ife. And mm. this is, that means there's, some, there's something that actually resides in the heart of mind of our young people and those potentials need to be unraveled. How do we do that? Let's create a human process to make that happen. And this mm. is exactly part of what you're doing. And a lot of fragmentation is happening in our institutions today. That means these young people sometimes just do things based on passion. We need yes, to sir. put their passion to wealth. And yes, that sir. wealth can actually snowball into mm. helping our communities to grow. We need mm. our communities in Africa and Nigeria. Many investors communities are not engaging, they're not interacting. True. I mean, who is not interacting with Ife? Yes, sir. With Enogo. Mm. The University of Abuja is not interacting with Abuja. The University True. of Ilorin is not interacting with Ilorin. Mm. This is, there's, there's a, a challenge, there's a yes, break. Sir. And yeah. that bridge needs to be needs, needs to be shaping. And I mm. think, think it's very important that this system, this forum, this mission, this epic moment that you're creating should drive that. Yes, should sir. drive the engagement between the community and the university. And especially mm. our young institution. Let me mention this also. Most importantly, what is the function of the student union? Mm. What is the function of the student union? It's not about a looter. It's an intellectual engagement. It's an economic yes, engagement. Sir. Yeah. Today, you know, should drive a new approach of making community to be more relevant with the, with the GAN and the GAN to be more relevant with the TAN. Now, we're mm -hmm. losing the marriage of the TAN and the GAN. And both needs to actually, we have to go back to, the, to find the interlock between them. And I think mm -hmm. it's important to find the human approach to driving an opportunity. There are a lot of ideas I generated from my young people. There are a lot of systems that need to support that. And policy needs to be part of that. I've watched the last series, uh, series four, where it talks about the policy, where you talks about the policy. The rest thing. of institutions, yes, and policies, exactly. partnerships, this, yeah. This is very important. Hmm. It's very important. Our university needs to drive our economy, or hmm. else we can continue 
to stay on this for the next 30, 40 years. Do not forget by 2040, by 2050, Nigeria is going to have the population of over 400 million people. That mm. will become the third largest country in the world after mm. the China and India. And we're going to be building a new economic society. Now the question is, how do we make that become a real, you know, a realizable kind of project? When Nigeria comes and becomes that third largest country, you know, in the world, it's an mm. exciting platform. It's an exciting opportunity, but it mm. must drive our our university must drive that development. Our institutions mm. must drive that. It must create a new idea. It must create a relationship, you know, between the town and the gun. Wow, wow. What a way to start the session. So, so energetic. Wow. And people will not know that um, you're not a 20 year old man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, Thank to you. round up um, the first session on, on the trivia, um, you know, I, I love your passion show, Moscha, um, and how much interest you, you've expressed you know, in our little conversations. And I want you to share that with us. Why are you, what do you think is the biggest impact area you know, for the undergraduate community contributing to our economic? Um, revolution and why are you very interested in that topic? Well, basically, I, I must say to you that uh, one of the things that we must find, you know, with our undergraduate institution is the fact that they are living in 21st century. Wow, brilliant! Nigeria is living. Nigeria is still living in 1960s and 70s. <laughs> There's no compatibility between the mm. two. You mm. find young people who are who are who have an exposed mindset to the new world view. They are engaging international best practices. They are engaging new concepts. Imagine a professor that comes into the class who was taught in 1960s and 70s, and he comes into the class, you know, 10 years ago. He taught some excellent young, young folks on a particular theory. 10 years after, he's still teaching the same theory. He's using the same materials. He has not changed, he has not evolved. His curriculum, his materials are not reviewed. The, you do not have a new thing coming forth into it. There's no engagement between them. There are no opportunity for students to even tell the professors what they actually want to be taught. Mm. I mean, I've had the opportunity when I was in Germany, my professor once asked me, I mean, let, let, that's a beautiful story, which basically I would love to tell. You know, yeah. I, got, I got to Germany and the first person I saw at the airport was my professor. Wow. I went to my doctorate, yes, my master's and PhD. And he, he picked me from the airport on, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that. That would never happen in a Nigerian university to find a professor picking up a student who is just resuming, you know, to come into a community. And he picked me up. And the first thing he said to me is, hi, I need to get you some winter jackets. And I was like, ah, this is interesting. He took me to shops and I was buying things with his money and his card. And he said to me in the next one, three, four months, please pay me back my money. And I said, thank you, Prof, I will do that. And that, that gave me a new understanding of what education is all about. Now, moving forward into my relationship with him, I went into, one day I went to see him in his office. And as usual, I just knocked and opened the door and I asked him, Prof, I actually want to see you. And he asked me the question, do you have an appointment? I said, not at all. He said, yeah, I said, just book an appointment. Then I'll give you a space within my schedule. I said, thank you very much. And I keep calling him professor, professor. He said, oh, please don't call me professor. My name is Raymond Vogue. He said, let's build a relationship. He said, that is what education is all about. Now, we, that's a missing point in our educational system. It's not a relationship. It should be a role model to a mentor, somebody who is actually guiding you, who's, who wants you to succeed. Not somebody that comes into the classroom and begin to lambast you, call you all sorts of names. No, wow. no, lambast your grand, great grandfather. You know, wow. give you whatever kind of name. You know, you mm. should, you should. You know, you, that, that's not even given to you. It's very challenging. We need to create a new culture, and I think it's in, it's very important that our young people must have an understanding of the culture where they are going to study. And I must tell you that many of our students, when they go to OAU or they go to University of Abuja and Nogo, they don't even understand that place. They don't understand the culture there. They don't understand the environment there. They don't understand the people. You no know, distractions. What's in there? What's not there? I've had many times to ask some young, young students, have you been to the Onis Palace before? They said, no, I've never been there. Why have you not been there? It's part of the community where you are studying. Have you been to some historical site before? They said, I've never been there. Why have you not been there? It's part of the community where you're studying. Have you, do you understand some of, the, some of the dynamics of the economy of Ife markets, you know, of you know, Enugu markets, of Nabuja markets? 
that's dynamics of where you're studying. These are institutions, this environment that will actually give you understanding of some of the problems that you can wow. provide solution to. Wow. Now, these are, these are very important. We don't provide opportunity to our young folks to actually have a deep knowledge of the environment where they're studying. And wow. that's very important. They must mm. understand. It's not just go to, to go to school. A school is a product of an environment. Yes, sir. Word. And that's why it's important. That environment is where study. Mm. I have a lot of students. I have a lot of students here in the UK. They are in an environment. Once they come in straight away, we give them handbook. That handbook is not just about the academic institutions or materials of the university alone. It also talks about the culture that they find in that environment, hospitals, train stations, you know, where you can go you know, and chill out after the, after the days, you know, troubles and wala, things you can do, where you can mingle, friends you can have, friends you not have, and, and so on and so forth. And I had the same experience when I went to Germany. My professor told me, Sayo, I want you to go out, go into the community. I give you three weeks. Don't come to the classroom. Just go and associate. Go to the nightclub. You no know, chill out. You no know, refresh. Have a beautiful kind of opportunity. That's very important for you. It's not just about education, study, study, research, research, all alone. That research must be researched within the social economic environment. Yes, where sir. Your Word. Is wow. Very based. And wow. I think that's very important for us. Mm. We're losing that. We're not embracing that. Our education institution is not embracing that. Our, mm. our vice chancellors are not embracing that, unfortunately. We need to, re, to re-engage that. We need mm. to actually take that to rethink, you know, back into how university is actually formed. University is, is not an entity. It's mm. a part of a society. Wow. Because it's part wow. of a society, it mm. needs to affect that society for good. Our yes, universities sir. are actually lacking. Our professors are lacking. There are so many things going on in our communities where investing needs to be actually be doing research about them. Yes, I mean, we have a whole lot. Yes, yes of course. I'm, I mentioned to you one day, mm. there are a lot of mining sites in Ife. In Ife. Mm. There are a lot of mining sites in Mina. We are investors in Mina. Mm. And we have geology students. We have geography students. Mm. We have a lot of students. Now, the question is, has any one of them go, gone to any mining site to actually mm. interface with the miners who are mining there and mm. understand how mining is done. There's mm. a difference between learning how to fly and being in the air. Mm. Many a times we, you can read a whole lot about flying. You can mm. read a whole lot about plane, the structure, until you go in there and you sit and, you, and, they, and, they, and they give you a lot of instruction on how to mm. use your seat belts and mm. when the plane is going to move and watching the plane moving and watching mm. the plane being in the air and watching the plane staggered and have some kind of challenges. And they're mm. telling you, hey, please buckle up again. You know, we're actually going into the storm and the like. These are very important part of mm. our lifestyle, which mm. means our university needs to engage the community and providing that same equal space to our undergraduate students to mm. realize that they can actually be part of that society. I've had some, I've had some, I mean, some professors at OAU and other universities who actually were born in OAU, studied mm. at the OAU, you know, became professor at the OAU, and they still don't understand the community itself. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. They still don't understand the community, so they have never gone anywhere. They're hmm. just within the university campus hmm. and they just recycle the same materials they used to teach students day in, day out, year in, year out. Hmm. And one of your one of your one of your members of your community, I was interacting with him one day and he was telling me that he's, he's studying uh, 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 engineering. And he said to me one day, sir, the, the, some of the materials I want. Uh, the f- uh, five years ago, students used, you know, as part of their n- projects, which was given to them by the professor, are the same material the same professor gave to us. There's no knowledge development there. And when there's no knowledge development, there's nothing is gained. Now we're losing that because there's no knowledge development. Now, how can these young people find a new idea, despite the fact that they are interacting with the global community, even why on, their, on, their, on, on different materials that the world has given unto us, we're compared to use those materials. And like mm. I mentioned to you now, we're losing almost a whole academic year now in Nigeria. Mm. Yes, sir. Who's going to rectify that? How do you rectify that? Mm. Why the global society are studying, students are studying remotely, primary school, secondary schools across the world, are using mechanism that is available to us to study remotely. Mm. What happened to our undergraduate students? Some of them mm. are complaining bitterly and they're asking questions. Are we going mm. to continue like this? When are we going to come in? When are we going to resume? Come on. It's mm. important that we begin to re- redefine what education really means. Our education culture needs to be redefined. We need to engage the system that's available to us. We need to engage the community. Yes, where sir. We, these are all very vital points. 
And by wow. so doing, a young undergraduate will make very serious depth of impact within our society. They are part of that society. They will have to build that society. They have to build our economy. And when they build our economy, they are building our GDP locally, states, and nationally. Yes, sir. Like word, word. These are very important. I mean, wow. I, I've read some of your materials of a young man that actually, you know, got $150,000 and built a business of $4.1 million. Yeah, right there in Ifeza. Exactly. And this exactly, it's, this is one out of numbers. There are good others who are also trying to strive. Yes, sir. You know, and I've mentioned in, in, you know, in a way, this forum you have created is a massive forum that can change the wealth of Nigeria as a country. That is the plan, sir. Yes, Nigeria sir. remains very critical to the greatness of Africa. Yes, sir. And Nigeria education remains very critical to the greatness of Africa education. Until we do that and build the right ecosystem for that education that can drive the, the modernization and the industrialization of Nigeria, and by extension, Africa, we're yes, still sir. going to continue to talk after 20, 2063 African Union agenda that actually prepare to have a greatness of Africa. I don't see it happening until we, we go back to the drawing board, get all the stakeholders together, and find the right balance that our education can actually you know, bring to help the industry and help the community. We have unprecedented, unprecedented unemployed, unemployed communities right now. Mm. It's massive, it's chilling, the number is staggering. I'm telling you, we are rolling out students day in, day out, they are going to the labor market, there's no job. Mm. There's no job. And when they find job, you find one pe we find one job on 30,000 applicants mm. fighting for it. And when you as that individual got that employed by that company, that lifts you up into a new social status. But you see, you find other 29,999 who are going to be there lamenting and struggling because there's nothing for them. And they keep asking questions on daily basis. What are we going to do? It's our collective negligence. It's True, our sir. collective failure. Yes, Both sir. From the policy maker, yes, you know, down to those in government, down to those in the universities. Even Everybody's the fighting. Structures. I mean, Even the family as, structures. Asu is fighting. Fighting for what? That's the question I'm going to ask. Ask Asu is fighting for their salaries. Hmm. I, it's, I, I mean, a, a laborer is it's entitled to his wages, says the scripture. And it's normal saying. But beyond that, a laborer also must work to make sure that the wages is asking for is truly entitled to it. How many of our young folks are properly mm. nurtured and yes, nourished sir. and breed? And the first, I mean, international, I mean, the, the, the excellent materials, the materials of, 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 the, of, of worth is actually dished out into their lives. Mm. You find a professor coming to the class, he doesn't care. He comes, mm. he gives you material and goes away. I mean, all of us, are, we experience this. Mm -hmm. You're a master's or PhD student, you're running after your professors. Mm. And when I, was, when, I, when I was doing my PhD, my prof told me, Ayobami, you have to teach me what your research is all about. I've never heard that word in my life. Mm -hmm. You have to teach me what your research is all about. He mm -hmm. said, because we must, he said, we must do this journey together. Mm -hmm. He said, it's a journey that you must bring to the table. Tell me all the materials. Tell me the theories you want to propound. And let me understand it. Then I will walk the way with you. That is what education is. And that is what you find in a global society. Mm. A business management student here in London, during the first year of his studies, he's already been told to go and form a business, to go and mm. form a concept, to go mm. and understand the society. And when he's coming up with an idea, he's sent to some of these big elite institutions, some of these first first class bank, Barclays Bank, HSBC. They go there on internship, mm. try to understand this, this, the system where the economy is being tried. Mm. And it's important we do likewise. We are, we are very, we are not committed to our young folks. It's unfortunate, mm. not mm. at the fault of their home. So that's why I say it's our collective negligence. Things yes. must change and we must drive that change. And I'm very thankful to you, Tony, and all the people here in this forum and several others that you're actually driving this and we're building it together. You have my commitment, you have the commitment of his imperial majesty. And I'm, I'm telling you, no, there's no limit to what we can do. We must make that change happen. It's our collective effort. We must do it. Wow. Whew. Thank you so much, sir. You know, that, has, that was, you know, I, I feel the fire in my bones. As I said, you guys don't know who you have here. The, the amount of passion and enthusiasm, it's, it, you know, it, give, it gives people like me hope to still commit to action. Thank you very much, sir. So let's quickly jump into the discourse. Um, as I said, this is a very busy person, so we need to respect his time. Um, we, we, you talked about the ecosystem, 
right? And if, if we as young people are going to have to take the future into our own hands, we need to understand how ecosystems are built, how they are designed and how they are driven. Now, we have the privilege of having you here. You've, you've, you've experienced ecosystems for value creation, both locally, internationally. I know you've been to other African countries, you've been abroad and beyond. So how can you, you know, I know I know I also have three questions, but you can, you can merge it into one. How are ecosystems built, right? How do we, what are the elements defining their influence on our national economy? And number three is who are the stakeholders that we need to engage to make sure that we can create our own youth or rather undergraduate driven ecosystem for value creation by fixing the challenges in our local economy. Thank you so much, Tony. Tony I, I think it's important that we, before you even design an ecosystem, you have to understand the system you find yourself in, the system where you, know, you are. True. And it's, uh, it, it's a challenge that our system is, is changing day by day. And uh, we know we're not very observant of the changes that we have in this system. Uh, we have be clouded many times with all the political narratives and trajectory and the challenges. And every one of us are caught in the web of wanting to become a political commentators. And I would not become that. We find many, many of our students who are everybody's fighting for somebody, everybody's shaping somebody's vision, somebody's political ideas. But beyond. I will mention to you, as somebody who have lived here in the United Kingdom, who have you know, had education in Germany, in the US, I must mention this to you, uh, Tony, that the educational institutions become a very pivotal instrument in building even the society where we live in. Mm. What the political institutions do, the, the kind of economic development they framed, mm. the kind of society they want to see, I mean, let, I, you know, it's, these are all things that are part of the, the whole, you know, design development that you find in a global society. Educational institutions are relied upon, you know, for scientific material, for up-to-date research, because that is part of their endeavors. Governments call on professors, design for us how we should live. The pandemic COVID-19 is ravaging the global society is changing our ways of life, is rebuilding our understanding of who we are, our health systems. I mean, I saw a lot of, if you, I mean, one again news, you hear, you know, strike and strike, doctor striking here, yeah, doctor striking there, a different kind of chain of just, you know, engaging in strike. It's important that we engage the institutions that are quite very, you know, pivotal to, to building a design of our lives. Here in the UK, I mean, I can speak because I've had a lot of engagement with different institutions and political engagement. You know, being in an educational institution gives you an ample opportunity to, to frame the world that the world wants to see. For example, you find a retail, a retail shops here and there, and you ask questions as to how do they develop? How does government know what they have and what they don't have? It's a design that university is allowed to build by the government to create. Now, in our own system, we have a system that just naturally evolved, not designed, not controlled, not regulated, they're just mm. on their own. Mm. And this is why the challenge we have as a nation and as, even as a continent, except for South Africa and part of Ghana and uh, Morocco, the North African Rwanda. countries, mm. and Rwanda and a few others. It's a, bit, it's a big challenge in Nigeria right now that we do not actually have things building. You hear things happening and you are asking questions. Who designed that? How did they design it? Mm. And you just realize it's somebody somewhere. I mean, you had a lot of things actually evolved in Nigeria and they, somebody's gonna tell you, oh, you know, it's just, it just happened. And they gave it to the government. Our government are very quick to take advantage of an idea that just designed and it's actually generating across the nation. And I'm pretty sure by the grace of God, this. It, uh, this space you have created, uh, Tony, we begin to, you've designed it. And that's very important because you created a vision. And you come up with what the mission is. And you come up with what are the elements you need there. Even God, I mean, look at the creation ecosystem. That, mm. that might be very important. Mm. I mean, it, it, it did not just happen by chance. Mm. It came to be because somebody had a design of what yes, he sir. wanted to see. 
mm. and he made almost everything together that mm. fit perfectly well into one another. Yes, sir. And eventually he created a man, you know, that eventually became the lead overall. Mm. And this, this is, this is, is this is a, a, a biblical or spiritual you know, institutional narrative that you find in Islam and others. And you find that in, you find that materials that actually connect very well with how God created everything. It was a design. And that design fits in so well. And it made man, Adam, to say, okay, you, uh, Adam, you lead all of this. He said, but why you want to lead them? There are instructions for you. You have to, you have to observe this, observe this, know this, know that, this and this and this. That's the most challenging thing. There's no man that wants to build a house, like Paul says in the Bible, that will not count the cost before going in there. To get an architect, you, you have to imagine the kind of house you want to build. Now, it's challenging for us in Nigeria right now because we do not have a concerted effort that basically are building the society. I mean, I've asked questions before. I've asked some very elite, powerful Nigerians, you know, question regarding why are we who we are? as Nigerians, why are we we are? Why are we like this? Why are things not changing? I mean, you hear stories of 60s, you hear stories of 50s, you hear stories of 40s, you know, stories of very young folks like yourself who are in their 20s about Macaulay, who are in their 20s about Meawulo, who are in their 20s and so on and so forth. And they fought for the independence of Nigeria. They came to the United Kingdom. They spoke to the, 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 the government of the UK fighting and asking for independence. They had the design in their mind of the kind of Nigeria they want to build. And the question anybody should ask is, what kind of Nigeria were they fighting for? Is this the kind of Nigeria they fought for? It's, it's, it's difficult because there's no doubt, you and I have never seen the blueprint of Nigeria, have you? We need to see the blueprint of the kind of Nigeria that's designed for us. And now the, the challenge I will say, Tony is the father, we need to begin to design the Nigeria I want to see. Yes, sir. And yes, that's sir. very important. We must find it. I mean, all the young folks here and the other, other millions of your folks across Nigeria and beyond. You know, we must find the kind of Nigeria that we want to see. That's a Central Intelligence Agency report, CIA report of the U.S. government. I think I mentioned that to you. That says between, between uh, 1999 and now, Nigeria has actually grown a population of 130 million people. Mm. That means ages is zero to 19 years old, uh, almost like 130 million in Nigeria mm. today. And that statistics is not wrong because Nigeria is 206 million population as of 2020. Mm. That 130 million alone is a whole lot. That's a vibrant young population that is driving. That's like 65% of the total Nigeria population right yes, now. Sir. That means mm. that's a technology compliant population. That's a population mm. that is driving innovation. That's mm. a population that can redesign the kind of Nigeria they want to see. Yes, sir. That's a population that can say that, oh, Tony, you want to make you Nigeria president. And mm. they will win convincingly mm. without any arguments. Mm. That's a population that can say, let's let's build the kind of nation we want to see. Let's be purposeful. Let's mm. create a design that can work for us. And that's very important because we have to find a vision right for the nation Nigeria. We have to find a vision right for the economy of Nigeria. We have to find a vision right. I mean, you hear 2063 agenda by the African Union. I mean, projection is there that Nigeria is going to be 400, 500 million by 2050. Where is the vision? Where is the design ecosystem for the next 30 years of Nigeria? Who is designing that? We have the political elite that actually ran all these figures. It's not the figures from us because we are not even taking population census. When last did we, count, did we count ourselves as a nation? How many are we as a population? When last? How many are we? We don't even know who, who we are, the numbers we have in each of the communities. If you, have, if you ask any students of any university here today and ask him or her, how many population do you have in your university? Your university. <laughs> I doubt you, I doubt they, will, they are going to be stammering. To give that's, why people, that's why people keep telling the stories for us and they don't even have it right. 100%, 100%. And that's why it's important. Basic fundamental, let's return back to the drawing board. Mm. Let's go and recreate. And I, I'm, I will say this to young, young Nigerians and young Africans. The future of the nation is in your hand. The future of the continent is in your hand. Let's stop the blame games. We might not understand the vision of our father. Should in case we do by nature of history and we understand some of the part of it, we might need to move forward and find the nation that we want to see. What kind of Nigeria do you want to see in the next 30 years? When you're going to, when you're going to be in the, age of, in the age of 50 or the age of 49, 
What kind of Africa do you want to see? Do you want to see the Africa that will drive the industrialization? Africa that will create jobs in millions? Africa that will allow the innovation to thrive and flourish? Africa that will provide opportunities for the creative culture? Africa that will actually rely so much on research and will build the educations? Africa whose university will be the top on the list you find on, on the, on the, across the globe on the ranking system? These are very important. We don't have the depth of you know, compassion and, you know, and, and aspirations to build Nigeria or Africa of our dreams. And mm. it's important. Mm. The men before they have done their best. We, can, we should stop blaming them for all the woes and challenges. Let's look forward into the future and build the Nigeria that we want to see. Let's begin to find our young, our young folks putting their hands on the dead and begin to build the Nigeria. Let's find the vision that connect us together. Let's stop the ethnicities. Let's find oneness. One Nigeria, forget I'm Yoruba, I'm Aousa, I'm Igbo, I'm this, I'm that, for goodness sake. Let's be purposeful together, see one Nigeria, one Africa, drive it, build it, and the world will look at us you know, for the greatness that the world is looking for. Africa has never needed the world. The world has always in need of Africa until we all come together and build the Africa of our dreams. Africa of our dreams is the Africa that should drive opportunities for others. Africa of our dream is Africa that should build research, should build the knowledge, build intellectual, build wealth, build agriculture. Why can't we feed ourselves? God has blessed us with all the lands that the world wants to see. Why can't we create an ecosystem for agriculture that can drive, create a better value chains, you know, from the raw materials to the final production? You no, know, we have the best of the cocoa, the 60, almost 70 percent 70% of the world cocoa are, are derived from Ghana, from Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria. And the cocoa industry, the chocolate industry worth $1 trillion. How much do we get from it as Africa? Just, just less than 1%. I mean, it, this is unacceptable. Why don't we create a value chain and produce our raw materials and create a finished product? It's the same way we get our crude oil, see what we do to it. We send it abroad to be refined. And when it's coming back to us, we are, we are buying it. Now the government is, you know, is not increasing the fair price because we are not creating a value chain. We're not creating a proper ecosystem that should drive all our systems. And I think it's important for us. There's no, there's no clear cut. There's no one way of designing an ecosystem. Let's look inwardly and find a system, an ecosystem that is Afrocentric, mm. an ecosystem that is Africa, an ecosystem mm. that is Nigerian. Things we can own. Let us own it. Let's stop copying. We copy, we copy almost everything. Mm. We copy the best practices. We copy the, the I mean, look at in Nigeria, we are the DSTV. What it is that we have. In Nigeria, you have the MTN. MTN is not a Nigerian product. It's a South mm. African product with invest, inve, investors from uh, you know, United Kingdom. Mm. We have a whole lot of Nigerians that are quite very rich. They can invest in the life of our young people. Why mm. should a young Nigerian from Ife go and collect $25,000 from an American man you know, in mm. the United States? Or because they have a product that is sellable. It's important mm -hmm. that we find our, you know, the matured old men, our, our rich people to begin to invest in our young folk. Let's create a, you know, a, a ripple effect of wealth creation. And that can be done. Let's use our, our university's environment, our undergraduate polytechnics, you know, college of education. These are institutions that can drive the new Africa that we want to see. And we have that young, vibrant population that can do it. They are yes. amazing all across the world. If you mm -hmm. find Nigerians anywhere they are, they are amazing. They are so brilliant. They are so excellent. I mean, seventy percent of the black daughters in the U.S. are Nigerians. I mean, what else? What else we want to see? Seventy percent of the black doctors in the U.S. that are providing the best, excellent health services for the U.S. communities, U.S. states, are Nigerians. That means that something is wrong with us, with our designing of our systems. We are yes, not sir. providing them. We are enabling environment for young folks to stay in Nigeria. That's that's, that's the call. We are not yes. providing the right space. For them mm. to thrive and flourish we're mm. not supporting them a young nigerian just left nigeria a couple of years ago and went to canada and mm. he was building a mobile application and he got to Canada out of frustration i mean a lot almost every nigerian wants to leave nigeria because you feel like you're frustrated in a, in a very beautiful country a mm. country actually has everything still very poor mm. i mean it, it's it's a paradox it's, and that paradox hard. needs to be unraveled yes, it's sir. a puzzle that we need to solve mm. you know nigeria should actually be feeding and we should be taking leadership when it comes to the foreign policy of Africa. Mm. We should be taking leadership when it comes to the education development of Africa. We mm. should be taking leadership when it comes to 
you know, technology development of Africa. We have all it takes to do it. We have every material. We have human resources. 130 million people. That's the population of some African countries. 130 million young people put UK and Germany together. That's about 40 million. That's the population of the young people we have in Nigeria. It's important we, re we redesign the system that is fit for purpose. The design, wow. the system we have right now is not fit for purpose. Yes, sir. And until the young people begin to take the right approach to leadership and governance, until the young people begin to find their voice and mm. realize that Nigeria as a country, we are all stakeholders yes, on sir. Nigeria as a country. Mm. Many times we don't go out to vote. We don't mobilize one another. True. I mean, it's, the, the Nigerian Medical Student Association came to the palace last year, January, thereabouts. Yes, no, last year, after the election of the President Buhari in, in March, you know, 20, 2019, they came to seize Imperial Majesty because he is the grand patron of the Nigerian Medical Student Association, NIPSA. And I, I took them to meet with Imperial Majesty. And we sat down, and the, the, the first question Kevin asked them is, did you guys vote? They said no. He asked them one by one, 15 of them came to the palace, 15 across Nigeria, because it's a national movement. Nigerian mm. Medical Student Association was created in 1963. It's wow. in, it's, yes, they all, most of the Minister of Health were once the president of Nigerian Medical Student Association. It mm. has over 70,000 medical students, both home and abroad. It's a massive number. And they said, they're sorry, we didn't vote. And they asked him, he asked them why. He said to vote for what and to vote for who? Mm. And mm. I can identify with them to vote for what and to vote for who, which candidates do you want mm. to vote for? Mm. And now he then asked them, say, brilliant. He said, I think there's a story here we all can unravel, we can engage with it. He then mentioned, Kabi then mentioned to them, okay, I think it's important that now that we begin to find, you know, open our eyes to a new consciousness that we can mm. build as a nation for the young people. Can you all now look at Josiah, who is your president, and there are 70,000 of you? Can we bring Josiah out as a presidential candidate? Mm. And now we begin to now create a blockchain of influence all around him. You now find you that your uncle Josiah can influence his father and can influence his mother to vote for him. And the Josiah's mother and father can influence their friends or uncles and family members to vote for Josiah. Mm. And, uh, and you can then create that ripple effect in mm. terms of how we choose our leaders. Mm. There's no reason why we cannot have 40 year old man lead us as a nation. Mm. It's, un, it's unacceptable that we begin to recycle the same set of people. Now, I mean, I'm not saying our fathers are not good. We've, we've had, you know, 40 year old have actually messed up anyway, you know, in the political circle in Nigeria. But I'm not saying that it's, that it's a yastic for every 40 year old man. Yeah, that's just one single story. It's not the e whole exactly, narrative. Exactly. We must find a space where a new mindset, a new worldview, you know, begin to shape our, our, our political landscape. Because mm. it's very important to get our political system right. Mm. And so that we can give opportunity to very intelligent mind to negotiate on our behalf. Yes, I mean, sir. a couple of months ago, of weeks ago, Nigerians were talking about Chinese buying Nigeria sovereignty because some people signed some agreements and they didn't mm. understand what was in it. I mean, mm. that's to me in itself, it's, it's demean. It, it brings us as a nation to a lowest ebb. You mean we cannot find people that can negotiate and look at documents on our behalf? and basically and tell us what's in that document, not after their own interest. What the global society do, the global, global countries do, is they find passion in writing their names, you know, in the book of history, that it's under the prime, prime minister or the president of this, you know, this country, that we, we brought this, we got this, we got this agreement, we got this deal, we built this country. You cannot find, you can't find a prime minister of the United Kingdom not negotiating very well, on behalf of United Kingdom, you cannot find the Prime Minister of Canada not negotiating very well on behalf of the Canadian people. You cannot find Donald Trump not negotiating very well on behalf of the American. He's telling you America force. Make America great again. Why can't we say the same thing for Nigeria? Let's make Nigeria great again. Let's sit together. Let's find passion. Let's find meaning. What is it that is called Nigeria? Arise, O oh compatriots. Nigeria is called Obey. We are the compatriots to serve our father's land. Come on, are we really serving? Are we building? Mm. This is very important. And when we are not serving, it's going to tell on the generations to come. It's already True. telling on our generation. On our generation, yes. It's telling on your generation. It's telling on the, on the zero, year, zero year old generation. 
If nothing is done now, by the time they are 20 years old, they're going to be asking, sorry, who were the people that came before us? Mm. <laughs> These are questions they're going to be talking about, you, Tony, and the rest of them. Who mm. are the people that actually came before us? Because mm. they begin to understand. I mean, I mean, your mom once told me, he said, what, what, oh God, what kind of a forsaken country is this? Mm. Referring to Nigeria, and I said, please don't say it again. It's a beautiful <laughs> country. Mm. It's not, it's not God forsaken. It's God blessed country. Mm. The challenge is we need to find leadership mm. you know, to unlock the wealth of this country. You'll find the beauty is there. Nigeria is, I mean, look at the kind of mind that's been embezzled in Nigeria. You cannot do that in the UK. UK will collapse. Mm. I'm telling you, UK will collapse. You find billions of naira living in Nigeria. I mean, a couple of days ago, and NCDC, 80 million, 80 billion in less than seven, in less than one year. You are going to laugh. It's a whole lot of money. I can imagine what 80 billion naira will do in the life of our young folks who are mm. full of good ideas, innovative ideas that can change our economic development. And that 80 billion is just gone. Nobody's, you know, nobody cares. We've had money that have just gone like that. Well, mm. I mean, once, once, once upon a time, General Yakub go and once said that the problem in Nigeria is not, is not money, it's how to spend it. <laughs> Nigeria used to have money then. Now Nigeria still has money, so much money as a nation, that if we look inwardly and we begin to promote our industries, our steel industry can build the way all across Africa. And we have engineering students who are here on the platform. We have engineering students being taught all across our universities. What kind of job do they do? Mm. What kind of engagement do you engage our engineering students to do? Mm. Our cocoa industry, should, they should create a whole lot of mechanism, machines. We can, we can fabricate it locally. Mm. We have to build Africa. We have to build Nigeria by ourselves. Nobody will build it for us. The Chinese will not come and build Nigeria for you. The Chinese mm. man is after the interest of China. Primarily, the British man is after the interest of the United Kingdom. Primarily, the American man is after the interest of the America. Primarily, a Nigerian must be after the interest of Nigeria, not taking our money to go and buy a house in London or in Dubai or in America. We must design the ecosystem that is fit for purpose and fit for our nation and fit for the future of our young people. It's very important. It's a clarion call that we all must champion. It's a clarion call that we all must be part of. We must not leave Nigeria to the ends of just few elites. The few elites who are very rich enough to send their children abroad to go and get the best of education. And the poor ones are only looking at the opportunities you can find anywhere. And most of our elite people, are, they find their children studying in America, studying in the UK, because they can afford it, despite that it's very expensive. And they are using our money to do that because it's not the money they actually raised. As they, they, they know, we pay tax to government. The government, they use our money you know, to do that. We must find opportunity to redirect the vision of our education. Our young people must be part of it. We must create the right policies. We must mm. find the local community. We must entrench ourselves into a vision that will create a new Nigeria that we want to see. Wow. Wow. That was amazing, sir. I can see your, you know, the amount of energy you're putting into this. Thank you so much. So useful, so energetic. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Time. Now, the thing is, um, you know, we're fast spent for time. I would like to spend one more minute of your time. So we're going to take the strategy session and the forum together. I'll just ask one question that encompasses everything so that you can give that um, rounded, comprehensive answer. So one thing that you've, you've mentioned is that... Um, there needs to be the creation of, a, of an enabling environment. You know, if you analyze everything you've said and even the value proposition of the venture matrix, the focus has to be, how do we create an enabling environment that supports economic value creation for the undergraduate community? And this is very, this, you know, because you told the story, let me also tell you a story. I have, I have one of my cardinals who told me that there was, there's an engineering student, I think electrical engineering student, I think he was in Insuka or something, but now he has left the country. He was not doing well in academics. But this guy had a vision that he wanted to extract light from thunder. Mm. Such a massive, crazy idea. Right now, the guy is in another African country. He has found how to extract light from thunder. Crazy stuff. The difference is that he was not in Nigeria. That was just the difference. So mm. until we can create an enabling environment, that young people now begin to take more risk to create wealth, to create solutions that can directly impact our economy we will not move anywhere. So if that is the defining factor, that means young people must focus on that problem and solve it squarely. 
Let us forget that there's no resources. Let us forget that there's no policy. Let us leave all of that. But how can it be that within our communities, our undergraduate communities, we are creating that enabling environment for economic value creation? So the question is, what, how, what can young people do right now? Since nobody's helping us, nobody cares about our own interests, nobody's doing anything for us, how can we create an enabling environment that directly impacts our local economy and also creates wealth um, 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 for, for this generation? You know, and then what's the one thing that you know we need to tackle to also now create that en environment? And sorry, the last thing is, um, you know, as I said, I'm trying to combine all the questions. <laughs> How do we facilitate? Because the truth is, let's say we solve this, we we'll still need to create relationships with other stakeholders. How do we solve the problem of relationship with our parents, with the government, with other corporates, um, you know, and all of that? So stakeholder engagement. How do we create relationships? How do we create an in real environment and facilitate multi-stakeholder relationships? Towards that creation of an enabling environment. So then we'll round up the session. I, I think it's I think it's important that we need to find the meaning in purpose for what we're doing. And it, it's it's important for every young people to see that and have a critical reflection on why am I doing what I'm doing. I'm very thankful you mentioned the students that want to extract you know light from thunder. I mean that's 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 quite that's quite a vision and that's quite an, an adventure that obviously needs to be supported by research. I mean, no one has ever done that, but I'm telling you, if you can provide a layout of how that will be done, you are surely going to find the research funding that will support that. Now, that's something that is lacking in us. Now, even when you have research funding in Nigeria, it's for a professor. Oh, doctor, he has found though, he has found, but he's not in Nigeria. So we're not going to take part in that glory. No, I, I'm saying, I'm actually saying that even if, if, even if, is in Nigeria, you won't find the fund, the right funding to do such projects. And this is why leaving Nigeria to go somewhere else it will be, it has become an opportunity for you. It's the same way. Let me give you the story of the young man I said I went to Canada. He developed a mobile application. And what does a mobile app do? This mobile app basically can detect a fake drugs in 20 seconds. A Nigerian who built a mobile app and patent it in Canada. And it's now, it has now become a Canadian government project. It got a shake from uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada for such a laudable development. That's an extraordinary feat for our health system. That is going to help the NABDAC and several regulatory bodies all across Nigeria and Africa to understand the fact that you have an app that actually can detect a fake drugs in 20 seconds. What does the app do? Just take the barcode of the drugs, upload it on the app, and it tells you whether that drugs is original or fake. That is a Nigerian product, not supported by Nigerian. Find its community in Canada. It's not been celebrated. The Canadian government has not deployed that same equipment back to us in Africa you find the irony of our lives. This is how we're losing wealth to global society. This is the irony of our lives. We're losing wealth. You know, we're losing our best of resources. The young men with $25,000 have gone to uh, venture capital in the US and collected his money. The money in the US already has a part of their, of their intellectual mind, of their creative mind. That means whatever they are making, it has, has a percentage. We need to find a proper meaning you know, a proper opportunity, regulate one another, find young people that are very passionate. One of the things I think Tosin uh, we're losing here is the fact that many times we don't do a very du dutiful feasibility studies before we do things. We rush to do things out of passion. We don't take an intellectual statistics of what needs to be done. Why are we doing what we're doing? what it is that we want to gain from what we're doing. And how do we intend to drive this for years to come? What are the projects, what are the pillars we want to lay this upon? That means even across all our undergraduate communities in Nigeria and beyond, it's important when you find one or two, three, four young people coming together, they need to begin to find reason for why, what reason for doing what they're doing. Why are they doing what they're doing? It's like four people asking, why are we together as friends? What it is that I want to achieve? What, what contribution do you want to make? If I'm the vice chancellor of any of the Nigerian University, 
honestly speaking, are we going to make my university to be a billions of dollars institution? Because as an undergraduate student, I will, you are not going to graduate until you perform me a solution to a problem that you have identified. And that solution must be a solution we can deploy to Nigeria and beyond. In every human being, there's an element of greatness and creation. If every young man can invent something, if given the right enabling environment and right tools to do that. Now, what do we need to first, first and foremost, what we need to do is to begin to study our environment. I think Tony, you might have to do this job also as part of the vision of the, the metrics or the forum. You will need, you might need to create opportunity, have this individual young folks in each of the university to lead this movement and create a feasibility studies of what is happening. Every environment, two environments are not the same. Ife is not as Ibadan. Ibadan is quite very different to Ife. Ife is different to Lagos. And that means it's important, there's something unique, very special and very peculiar about each of these environments. Therefore, it is quite very pertinent that we begin to study first and foremost our environment. Students don't go to school alone by just carrying your books. You are going to Ife, you have never been there before. The question is, what makes Ife a unique city? If you are going to the University of Abuja, what makes Abuja an enviable city in Nigeria? If you are going to the University of uh, Inzuka in Enugu, what it is that thing that is very peculiar to them there? And what are the challenges and the troubles that they have there? And what could be my contributions into solving those challenges and the troubles that we have there. This is very, number one, that's the first number one thing we need to do, very important to study the environment. And when we do that, we'll begin to identify some very excellent, you know, challenges they have there. Perhaps maybe there's no, you know, e-commerce system that can supply food to students in the universities and it's challenging for students to go out and buy food. Why don't you just create a scheme? Or you, two, three, four people come together, create a scheme, you know, engage other you know, mechanism that can support its delivery. Or you find yourself in there and you realize that perhaps there are a chain of excellent, brilliant, you know, creative culture young men there who can sing very well, you know, they can, they can do, you know, different artistic materials. That could be very peculiar. At, at society, you know, at institutions globally, it's becoming a massive, you know, economic tab that the world is using. One of the Nigeria piece, Nigeria artwork was bought, you know, about a year ago for $1.6 million. If you're an artist who are studying art in the university, that should be an interesting part to you to realize that a piece of artwork from you can actually generate a lot. Go into your community and understand something that's very peculiar about that community. Why don't you just draw that individual or draw that particular material, ancient material, or materials of the culture that you find in there and begin to showcase it. That's the beauty of that particular environment. Perhaps one way, one, one, one way, one way. Social media is giving us a huge platform to, 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 to deploy our skills you know, into a global community. A young man who, just done, who has just done the design of a particular tool can sell it to millions of people. It's just for someone to pick it up and they'll blast and blow it. These are ways we get connected. And I think it's also important to find collaboration. Collaboration is a new way where, and unfortunately, I think we're losing and missing that. Uh, Tony, Nigerians were very individualistic. Honestly, we are very individualistic in almost everything about us. And I think it's, it's, it's a sickness that we need to solve. We need to begin to create, you know, a collaboration, finding meaning of reason why we exist together. And this is the essence of the ecosystem. One cannot do without the other. I mean, look at the body. The body in itself is an ecosystem. I mean, look at the eyes. If the eyes is not functioning, it cannot lead the entire body to do what should happen. If the hand is actually not working very well, it might not be able to feed the mouth and feed the entire body with the nutrients that require. If the leg is not working, now that means it might not be able to move the entire body to where the body wants to go. And this is why it's important that we find that every part of us have one role or the other they can play. All of us cannot be Nigeria president, but all of us can contribute to the greatness of Nigeria. All of us cannot be the governor of, of a state, but all of us can make meaning and impact to make that state you know, one of the best states you know, in the world. 
all of us may not be, you know, the vice chancellor of the university, but we all can contribute to the development of that environment. And I think it's important we find collaboration also very important. And you see, also, one of the things I think we need to be driving is to engage our young people to begin to document what they do. Then it's very important. Wow. The reason why the global society or the global world actually were, you know, integrated, you find things happening very well there is because mm. there's a proper system that you can explain. They tell you their come, stories. If mm. you come to London and you show Nigerian jollof rice, if you cannot explain it, a white man will not eat it. And unfortunately, that's the whole idea because you bring jollof rice here to London or to America, you are unable to explain it. Because you're unable to explain it, people actually, they are worried because they, there's no interaction between their community, the environment, and the product you have brought in. Now that's why it's important to find young people to explain the processes and the documentation. We need to begin to keep you know, the, our intellectual properties. It's important. We've had so, some of those challenges. You realize that there are a lot of materials about Africa. You cannot find a lot of materials about Nigerians. You cannot find because nobody's able to explain and show you where those materials are. But you see, we've actually built a community of nation, a community of people that is very powerful. It's quite very important. We have, have a documentation. And I think your scheme and your system needs to create an institutional engagement whereby mm. we have a whole lot of young people that are part of this movement. We yes, have some sir. exceptional young Nigerians that write very well. I've yes. seen some of them. Even mm. at 2021, 20, they are very brilliant when it comes to writing. You mm. see their material. I mean, you teach them here in the UK. You see what they write. And you ask yourself, why are you then failing in Nigeria? If you can become a first-class student here in the UK. I ask myself. <laughs> and I mean, it, it means that there's something wrong with the system where you actually, actually produced you. Yes, sir. True. And I've seen that a lot, the, the, the kind of change, how Nigerian students metamorphose from being a top-class student to a first-class student here in the UK. True. And you True. see them, I just finished my, uh, my graduate, my master's degree with a first class. Mm. And I asked, okay, what did you get when you were in Nigeria? It's, it's, you can't believe it, sir. It's ordinary, ordinary, it's ordinary <laughs> pass. And you then, you then wonder how that happened because there's an enabling environment, environment. Yes, created sir. for him. He's studying under a conducive environment. He's studying under the best material. That he can see the, the, scholarly competence. The, you can mm. see the 2020, 2019 literatures. Yes, sir. just been published. Mm. It's not relying on the literature that was shown to me, which was in 16, 1969, mm. which that professor used to do. Mm. And that's why it's important. We en let's engage in an intellectual discourses. That's very important into driving a new culture we want to see. A change can be created. It doesn't take 50 or 100 people. The Indian technology worldview was created by just 22 young men Indians who are wow. into IT and uh, entrepreneurship. Wow. And they all came together and decided to say, we must do something about our nation. Wow. And they revolutionized India up to date. And this is something we must do in Nigeria. We must not wait for the government. We must not wait for the regulatory body. Do not wait for the vice chancellor. Let's begin to find meanings together. Let's sit together. It's in ideas you create wealth. When you don't create ideas, there's no money. When you create ideas, what people buy into is the ideas. And that idea is a powerful instrument that we need to actually put on the table. But it has to be done collaboratively. It has to be done as, as a whole body. You know, let's create the ecosystem that works for us, create a system that can revolutionize and change our nation and turn the weight of Africa around. Let me say this, whether we like it or not, Africa will not develop and grow until Nigeria finds its footing right. Nelson Mandela said that in the 90s. If you turn the, I've used this example a few times, if you turn the map of Africa anti-clockwise, you will see where Nigeria is stationed. Nigeria is stationed, and, and that when, when you turn it anti-clockwise, it will look like a pistol, like a gun. If you try that, you will see what I'm talking about. It looks like a pistol. And check where Nigeria is stationed. Nigeria is stationed in a, in a, in a trigger position. You want to trigger a gun, want to shoot. And you see where Nigeria is stationed as a trigger to the growth and the development of Africa. That's where Nigeria is stationed in the map. And I think mm -hmm. it's important that will begin to drive the right change that Nigeria needs, the right ecosystem for the nation and for the continent. Nigeria yes. is the heartbeat of Africa, whether we like it or not. If you like, I've said it, a different environment. If you like, you can pump in billions of dollars into all the African countries and leave Nigeria the way it is. Nigeria will survive, but unfortunately it will take time. I mean, Dubai will be celebrating 50 years anniversary by next year. 
Dubai just, you know, became a country that just grew from nowhere and have made the world one of the best in the marketplace where they're selling their materials and equipment. And I think we can do the same thing for Nigeria. We can actually create the legacies that they will want to see. We can yes, build the wealth that will actually surpass each one of us. History can beckon on us and look at each one of us and call us names and say, Tony, you have done well. You yes, are sir. saints and mm-hmm. your effort is priceless. Thank you, mm-hmm. everyone. I really like, I appreciate you know, the opportunity of being here today together with us. And I believe that the journey ahead will be very smooth and very great and glorious. Thank you so much. Wow. This has been such an electrifying session. Thank you so much for the effort, the intentionality, the deliberacy, the excitement that you shared with us today. In fact, I need to publicly say this, that you have seated here one of our grand patrons, right? <laughs> Even on behalf of the father of, 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 of our land, right? The Oni. So I'm so, so I'm so privileged to have you with us. Sir. Thank you so much for sparing your time. I know it's going to probably jump on another lecture because, as I said, he, all, of his, all of his time is booked. So for him to really do this, I know how much um, it means to us and it means to me. Thank you, sir, for lending your voice to this generation. Thank you, my brother. We appreciate it. No, we, uh, have a, we have a long journey together. Don't forget. Oh, yes. And yeah. We yes, sir. plug a lot of things. Yes, sir. It, it's yes, important. Sir. If we don't do it, the generations, we, we call us failure. Mm. And we must find that rhythm and find that mm. passion. Mm. I mean, our, our years on heart is not millions. Mm. And mm. within the time we're going to stay and spend, let's do mm. something purposeful, something yes, meaningful, something thousands of years to come, the generation we call saintly and priceless. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Um, as I said, this has been such an amazing session. We have come to the end of today's session. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Do have a great day. Thank you for joining me, sir. You can leave. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.